The role of the Orthodox Church in the war in Ukraine is widely discussed today. However, the media, and especially social media, always looks for simple answers. Hence, they often don't understand the Russian Orthodox Christianity, its role in the war, and pro-war propaganda. There are four main misconceptions that distort the image of the Church's role in the war and pro-war ideology. Let's discuss them one by one. The first misconception is that the Russian Orthodox Church is against Ukraine. Orthodox Christianity uses the concept of canonical territories. For the Russian Church, her canonical territories include most of the former Soviet Union, including Ukraine. In other words, Ukrainians are believed to be her own congregation, brainwashed and misled by the evil West and heretics. This is partly true because one of the most powerful Ukrainian Orthodox churches, especially in the east of the country, where most of the military action takes place, is the Church of the Moscow Patriarchate. This church suffers the most damage caused by the Russian military forces to religious communities in Ukraine, up to 65%. Consequently, the leadership started the process of gaining independence from Moscow autocephaly, though less than enthusiastic because the church is split over obedience to Kiev or Moscow. The second misconception represents the patriarch Kirill as a grey cardinal of sorts, Putin's right-hand man and one of the most important political figures in Russia. Nothing can be further from the truth. Although symbolically very visible, the political influence of the Church is limited to the spheres of religion and family values, and she has little to no say in most of the issues of domestic and especially foreign policy. The Patriarch himself was caught off guard by the war in February. Until early March he could not find the right words in his public speeches and sermons. And this is understandable, because he has so much to lose. He is currently losing a significant part of his congregation in Ukraine, his authority as a religious and a spiritual leader, choosing loyalty to Putin over his pastoral and moral obligations to his church. Thirdly, whenever the Russian Orthodox Church is discussed, the Patriarch alone represents her most of the time. This is a big generalization and simplification. The Patriarch is not the Church. He is a very important symbolic part of her, especially of the leadership structures. But the Church is too big and ancient. She is more of an umbrella than an organization or an ecclesiastical body. There are all kinds of groups, organizations, clubs, institutions, congregations, parishes, monasteries, educational institutions and uncountable individuals. They are loosely united under this umbrella and they cannot have a coherent position on any issue, including the war in Ukraine. Lastly, the Russian pro-war propaganda is not based on Orthodox Christianity. Although it plays a minor role, the most important patriotic narrative in Russia is the cult of war. Not the war in Ukraine, but the Great Patriotic War, which is the name for the Soviet part in the Second World War. The heroes, symbols and memories of that war are much more powerful and sacred than the Orthodox Church has ever strived to be. Hence, the Ukrainian authorities and forces are called Nazis, hence the anti-West rhetoric and hence the pro-war propaganda. Please, like the video, leave a comment and subscribe to the channel. I see you all next time.